All right, friends, it's time to give you loyal listeners a discount on protein powder. You may or may not know, but I launched my very first protein powder two years ago. It's a grass-fed beef isolate with only three ingredients, grass-fed beef, either organic cacao or organic vanilla, and organic monk fruit. Now, if you don't want any of the added flavor and sweeteners, you can also just get unflavored. And no matter what flavor you choose, you're getting over 23 grams of protein per scoop, which is gonna keep you full and satisfied between meals. I love starting my day with a Fab Four smoothie and breaking my fast with that much protein. It makes a serious difference in my cravings and blood sugar balance the rest of the day, and I've seen it with my clients as well. Now, I never thought I'd own a product company, but when I got pregnant with Sebastian, I realized the majority of protein powders were chemically extracted or enzymatically extracted, and I wanted to use heat and water only. I wanted minimal ingredients because we don't need those emulsifiers, fillers, or added vitamins, minerals, and probiotics. All of those additions increase the chances that it's not gonna work for your body, whether it be bloating, digestion issues. I just wanted pure clean protein to keep you full and satisfied so you could build the most delicious Fab Four smoothie. And I have to say, I'm pretty proud of the flavor. If you take a look at our reviews on Amazon, you'll see five-star reviews for flavor. And that is key because if you don't love your Fab Four smoothie and you don't love drinking your protein powder, you're not gonna do it. It won't become a habit and it's consistency that outpaces everything. So. If you're here and you're listening and you want to give our protein powder a try, use the code PODCAST5 for $5 off your order. And let me know if you love it. My favorite ways to apply this protein powder is in my Fab Four smoothie, making freezer fudge, making chocolate milk, making hot chocolate, and throwing the unflavored into all my kids' baked goods. So let me know how you use it. Let me know if you love it. And share this podcast deal with your friends. Today's guest is my friend, Jesse Delo. Jesse is a manifestation coach, art therapist, certified yoga instructor, and the co-founder of the wellness platform, How You Glow. Jesse gets into manifestation on today's podcast, and it's surprising. It isn't about all the materialistic and aspirational goals you have in life. It's about getting out of your own way, living in the present, and harnessing your joy. And I think it's perfectly timely for 2020. Jesse, thank you so much for coming on the show. I feel like it's been it's been months since I've seen you in person. I think almost a year because was the last time I saw you at Jordan Younger's wedding. Was that a year ago in November? My gosh, I know. I think you're right, but this year has flown by in about five seconds. I feel like, yeah, it's and you've been pregnant so almost all of it. I've been <laughs> pregnant. Yeah, I got pregnant sometime in January. So yeah, the whole. 2020, just been growing this babe. When did you get? How how far along are you now? So um, I'm due Thanksgiving. Um, okay. I'm actually the week after, but like I'm I'm actually being induced this time around based on everything and CHLA and all the fun, all the fun mm-hmm. we had with Sebastian. We're just gonna, we're of gonna course, take a little bit more control than we had last time, just for personalized anxiety levels about it. But yeah, so we um, got pregnant. St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> awesome. That sounds like a fun way to go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we Some were green quarantined. Beer and- <laughs> <laughs> we were quarantined, but it was... Uh, I think, you know, there were like rainbow streamers up for bash and there were some totally. like... There were some... There was uh, some magic in the air. There was some magic <laughs> in the air, for sure. Um, that's awesome. Yeah, well, that's... Well, tell me a little bit about, I want you to tell me, but I also want you to tell our audience a little bit about what you do. I think it's so powerful right now based on the fact that we're quarantined and this year year has been so crazy for everyone. How you work with clients, what does your business look like? And tell me how you got started. Yeah. So I work with clients one-on-one or I work with corporations in the group workshop setting. Um, Before all of before the world completely changed, a lot of it was in person and I would meet with clients one-on-one at the beach and I would even meet with corporations and workshops at the beach. The beach was sort of my office. Um, or I would go into places like Google or you know Amazon and big corporations and lead workshops for them, seminars for them. But now everything's taking place just like we, we are right now over the phone or Zoom. Um, and it's really helping people to identify 
what's going on in their internal dialogue. It's like a lot of introspection as to how we speak to ourselves. What is the sort of script or storyline happening on a daily basis that we're not always conscious of that has just been there over time or evolved over time due to experiences that we've had or, you know, people telling us X, Y, or Z about ourselves or just, you know, the, the culture or society that surrounds us, right? Or even the work environment that surrounds us, how we view ourselves in relation to others. And then from there, really, it's a lot of undoing. So it's not so much like, you know, people have this idea of manifestation of like, oh, I, ha- I want more and more and I want this and I want that. And it's like this very like, oh, how can I get a million dollars in three weeks? You know, this like very sort of like kind of strategic way to get more. And it's really about stepping into who you are and releasing who you think you're supposed to be or what you think you're supposed to want to find true happiness and to find true contentment in your day-to-day existence. Wow. So it it almost is like it's whatever you want has always been there. You're just blocking it with self-dialogue. Yeah, or you can't even, or you don't even know what you want because everything else is so loud, like you're saying, that you haven't had the opportunity to really think for yourself or to really step into your authenticity to say, what actually makes me happy? What type of person do I want to be? And what type of person do I want to be with romantically? What kind of, you know, how do I want to spend my day? And I think so often we just fall into a groove and we just go with it. And then people end up very unsatisfied or unhappy. Um, Even like, you know, with what we eat or our body or, you know, the work that you're doing with people, you know, sometimes it's very unconscious and it's just something that we've landed at and we don't even know how we got there, but it's very hard to, to get out of it unless we assess how we are responsible for what we've created. Wow. So when you're sitting down with someone, I mean, I feel like that's layer on layer on layer. We're looking at your relationship, how you eat, like what, what your day looks like. And it sounds like you're saying we sort of have control over all of this if we can unpack what we think or what is unconscious. Yeah. And so that's a huge part of it is um, taking responsibility for your role as creator of your life, right? You are director, writer, producer of the show. And I think a lot of people... And it's, and it's no one's fault. This is just sort of human nature. We blame external circumstances, right? But it's very easy to, you know, to think that things aren't going your way because there's things against you, right? Or people messing with your flow. Um, when in actuality, everything that's presented to you is an opportunity. And if you view it as a gift to elevate your own consciousness and for you to rise and grow as a as a person and take responsibility for how you you know encounter and perceive whatever is in front of you then you know the world is your oyster you really can manifest and create anything in any given moment but when you're a slave to the external or to someone else's energy then you don't view you know the world as abundant or that you have limitless options or potential because you've taken away your power Wow. So when you're sitting down with someone, how do we take our power back? Like, Okay. So um, when I work with people, it's typically six sessions is like my typical package that I offer. And I find that that's actually really effective because the first session is basically an intake process. I'm just assessing everything in your life from, you know, like we said before, like what your daily routine is to your romantic life, if they're, you know, where you are in that, maybe you're single, maybe you're married, you know, um, maybe you want to be married and you're not, wherever you are, your professional life, your home life, you know, all of it, really every single aspect, um, because everything is connected. So some people might come to me and have one specific issue that they want to deal with, but I still want to hear everything. I want to know how every aspect of their life is fitting together. Um, and oftentimes there's a very interesting thread that runs through everything. Um, and so they might not have come to me for a certain thing, but actually that other thing is the thing that we need to work on, which is fascinating. But yeah, then so once we know where we're starting from that first session and we've outlined like really where where they're at, then we can figure out where they want to go. 
But until you assess where you are, it's very difficult to know and navigate where to go from there. So that's the first part of the process. And then a huge, a huge part is taking complete responsibility for everything. So you asked how to take, you know, the power back. The power is in your hands if you choose to, you know, give yourself that power to claim your reality as your creation. And so we look through how your energy is the common link between everything that's happening to you, um, good and bad, how you perceive it, which I don't think anything is good or bad. It's really just experiences that we're having with different energy and different charge, different frequency. And if there's something that feels out of alignment, how we can shift our own energy to match up with the alignment that we seek in all aspects. It's like... It's not that it's over my head, but I just want to be like, okay, now, <laughs> now what do I do? <laughs> now what do I do? Yeah. I'm, uh, I just, you know, sometimes Chris will call me little chip or it's like this chippy the action squirrel is sort of what he calls me. <laughs> and he's just because he's like, you're just like a smiley little chipmunk that runs around and is like, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And, and I get really excited. Like I feed off the energy of, production, not not until like the grind production, but really like creation of things, whether that's like a book or a course or I don't yeah. know. I get really excited about like putting things out into the universe. And I yeah. feel like there's something to that energy that allows me to continue to do that. 100%. 100%. That energy of excitement is like what fuels the doors to start opening, right? And so I always tell people that too. It's like, when you're thinking about the day ahead, even if it's just like a mundane every day, you know, nothing's so special about that day in your mind, you have to get excited for it, right? Like all the things that you think you have to do, you get to do, right? You get to have this opportunity to make a different, a different rhythm, a different pattern um, if you choose to. And so I think the energy of excitement is very, very powerful. It's like a snowball effect. And so getting excited about anything is actually a really powerful tool. So you hit the nose on the head. Like it's really like that energy of, my gosh, I'm so uh, like even just inspiration, right? Oh, I see something that inspires me. Okay. That, that energy I'm going to use to create something instead of oftentimes we see something. Um, and it feels, you know, inspiring in theory, but it makes us a little bit jealous or angry that that person's doing it, but we want to be doing it and we feel far from it. And we feel like, you know, it's separate from us. So what should be inspiring us and fueling our own creativity actually, you know, creates this lag in energy because we feel, oh, well, I'll, I'll never be able to do that. Right. And so for some reason, and I'm curious how you developed this ability to just trust yourself, right? Like, oh, I get an idea and I can just do it, right? I have this idea. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to write a book. I'm going to do this and I'm going to start a podcast. And So some people might have these these desires, but not believe in themselves and not trust that they will be supported if if they take the leap. And so there's a big difference in the way that people talk to themselves internally or think about themselves, feel about themselves which determines whether someone actually can create that reality and make that happen versus, you know, not being able to to really do it. Yeah. I don't really know what I think about though, is that like my childhood was very supported Mm -hmm. and I'm the oldest of three girls. And so I was always looking for, I was always looking for external validation from my parents because I think when I was growing up, they were always like, good job. And, you know, that's, you can do anything and great job. And um, what was what's so interesting is, is how, how my business and how, I guess you can call it manifestation or that energy has gone through morphs over the last almost 10 years of my entrepreneurial business is to look at the very beginning when I wasn't getting a lot of critical feedback via comments on Instagram and I wasn't comparing myself or following people that were really in my space. I was just following my high school and college friends and right. you know and just like putting stuff out into the world and there was no pressure because it wasn't my full-time job the first three years. It was just like this really fun, exciting thing that I got to do. And it kind of took off on its own because of that. 
And then as I grew, and I think like after after my first book, before my second book come, had come out, and there's this groundswell of a following sort of, and then you're starting to get like critical feedback and people being mean and you know your agent, your editors are saying like, hey, well, this person's in your space and this is something we really like you to emulate when you do your book tour or you do... So then you start paying attention to these other people and then that's where the slowdown happens for me. It's like... Then all of a sudden, I'm doing what you're saying, which is like looking at these other people in my space, whether they're doctors or nutritionists or health coaches or life coaches or whatever, yeah, yeah. going like, how are they putting out like three Instagrams a day and like they're having the best time ever and they just insta story their whole life? I can barely remember to like insta story what I eat if I think I like. Everything I go to take a picture of is like an empty plate of food because I was probably just like so excited to eat it. Yeah, because you're living your life and you're enjoying it. And yeah, yeah, it's so true because, you know, what that does is take you out of your, your present moment, right? When we're like looking at someone else's life or we're looking at, we're comparing ourselves to someone else in the perception of what we think might be better or more, you know, successful or valuable than what we're putting out there is we're taking away our power and we're taking away um, the sense of embodiment that we have in our own experience that creates that authentic joy from creating. And instead, it becomes very much intellectual. Okay, what should I do, right? Like it's very um, strategic. Like how, what are they doing? How can I be doing that? And there's no real, obviously there's there's definitely um, professional gain to looking at what's going on and assessing and saying, oh, I'm inspired by that. They're doing that. I'm going to dig into how they made that happen, and and for sure, doing research and you know enhancing your repertoire of what you're doing is incredible. But when you let that be the the sole driver of your work, and you don't tap into like actually what you're passionate about and what brings you joy in your own unique voice, then you lose that spark, right? You lose that 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 special sauce that only you can bring, and so you might get the success, you know, the numbers might rise, the, you know, <laughs> the checks might get whatever is sent in, but is it really successful if you're not enjoying it? If you chose a career based on something that feeds your soul, the idea is that you actually feel good, right? And you actually are energized by your work, not depleted by it. And I really truly believe that if you're in the right line of work, you can have it all. You can have a very lucrative profession and be satisfied on a soul level. But it's when we betray ourselves and just start looking around and in any aspect, not just professionally, romantically, you know, any, even with friendships, like when we say, oh, I should be doing this because they're doing this. I should be doing this because this is what is expected of me. And we don't honor ourselves. That's when we are unhappy. And that's when no matter what it looks like on the outside, it does not matter because we're not living in our authentic truth. And you can go as far as you want up the ladder. You're not going to get happier. It's interesting because it is, you know, you're taught at a young age, like this is the checklist of things that, you know, graduate high school, graduate college, go, you know, get married, have these children, have a house. Like there are the social expectations of like, yeah. what your life should look like. And people can check all those boxes and be totally miserable in their existence. Totally. And I'm like, I'm really curious about your experience with clients because how, I mean, you did sort of allude to like, you're getting going through an intake and then all of a sudden it's not about the job, it's about the marriage or it's like mm-hmm. other things are sort of coming up for you as an issue for them. Mm-hmm. How do we... Like, let's compartmentalize and look at each one of those categories. And how does someone assess for themselves if they're truly happy and in alignment with like what they should be doing? Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, I think in a lot of ways, it comes down to how you feel, right? Like, and and there's an inner sort of checklist of like, you know, am I sleeping well? Am I, you know... Like, do I feel how how alive do I feel on a scale of one to ten? Right, like how embodied do I feel in my existence, in my presence? How 
um, magnetic do I feel? How healthy physically, mentally, emotionally do I feel? So like really assessing, because I don't think a lot of people give themselves the opportunity or the time to like really check in with themselves and say like, how am I doing? Like there's just been so much on my plate of to handle that I haven't even directed that inquiry into myself of like, am I doing okay? Right? Like just checking, you know, checking, checking what's going on. So I think starting with these like physical daily um, experiences, just to sort of be um, more aware of how you are going through your day and how you are experiencing your life. Um, And maybe, you know, something happened and you didn't even realize there was a connection between, oh, well, that was happening with, you know, work. And then that's when I started to get these like panic attacks or this was happening with a relationship I had. And that's when I started to get like a really severe stomach pain. You know, there could be like a real link between what's happening physically and something that has not been um, assessed or resolved going on emotionally in your life. But yeah, so I think, you know, like romantically, I I do a lot of work with couples and also with just people trying to level up their their relationship or attract their life. Um, and I'm really fascinated by by relationships and by love and what keeps people, you know, connected over time through the ups and downs and the chaos of life. So I think um, it's been very fascinating to see like the role the relationship plays for people in their overall happiness. And I, my theory is that it's like one of the number one um, predictors of your satisfaction in your life. And I think if you have a happy relationship and a healthy relationship, that's like the foundation for a lot of other things being more tolerable than um, they would be. You know, like if you can come home to a safe, happy, loving partner or home, I really believe that that creates this like real nest for you to flourish and also to take those risks that you want to take out in the world. And so I've, I've, I've found working with people that that's like a big, a really big factor in overall being able to, to make stuff happen, (laughs) you know, it's really interesting. Yeah. So I do a lot of work and I think I've sort of come across that through my interest of it, but also because it is, I notice like some people will have such a focus. They'll come to me with such a focus on their professional life. But then it's like, when we get down to it, like, okay, well, what's going on with the relationship? Like there's a, there's a, something that's out of balance at home, right? That's preventing them from trusting themselves or feeling entitled or worthy of whatever it is. And it's like on the fundamental level, they're not supported or they don't feel supported. And they don't feel confident or competent. Yeah. I mean, you, I think when you, you hit the nail on the head there, when you're in a relationship and Chris and I actually were talking about this the other day, I was just explaining to him that, you know, when you're a female and you're growing up and you're dating and you're single, there's a lot of external, I mean, you're getting sort of signals from the opposite sex or whatever. You're open to like, Hey, is there any sexual energy here? Is there like friendship energy here. Just yeah. There's just like a lot of inputs. And then if you're in a committed relationship and falling in love with someone and then you're putting... It, it's You're getting your external validation if you've relied on that or if you've been taught to... You know, if, if your childhood was was one where you received, like I explained earlier, like my parents were always all about, like I'd get a good grade, bring it home and be like, see, you know, like... <laughs> right. And I don't know if like how I was taught that. If that was from them, you know? And I... And I, I think about like, there is a part of me and I think I'm, a lot of women where we're taught that adoration from a man is like, oh, we're beautiful or we're, you know, we feel confident and he's telling me that I'm like pretty or whatever. And I was telling him, I'm like, I rely on you for, like, I really am not, if anyone's like looking my way, I'm not even noticing it. Like I really like, rely on you for that validation. And Mm -hmm. it's not something that I, I don't want to put pressure on you for that. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's just sort of the way it is when I like fell head over heels in love Mm -hmm. with you in 2007. Mm -hmm. It was like, Mm -hmm. Hey, you're the guy who's telling me that, that I can do it all. And that I'm like, you know, smart and competent and beautiful. And like, 
your laundry list of like, oh, I can go take on the world. Like it, it does come from him and I don't want him to, I have it in me, obviously. You all have, we all have like a certain amount, but yeah. there, I, I know that like where I am in my career would not have happened with the other people that I dated before Chris. And I would right. not be where I, I am without Chris, you know? And yeah. It's crazy. Like, I mean, yeah. from, we, we both left like really big careers sort of holding on to each other. It's so <laughs> beautiful. It's so awesome. <laughs> but I, it's weird yeah, that you but said that because... I think it's a really good point that you make that I love that you also communicate to him like this is like something I need from you and this is something I appreciate and I love about you and don't stop, right? It's like, yeah. it's like because sometimes like we take for granted that our partners need to hear what we need, like that they automatically know and that they think that what we always needed is what we still need. And that's going to evolve over time, right? So like you might need something different than you needed back then. Like you might, with all the, like you said, the comparison with like, the, you know, more intensity to the work that you're doing now, you know, versus a few years ago, even you might need a different type of support, right? And so communicating to him like, this would be really helpful or this would be, you know, and just, I think the more that we can open a dialogue of like, this is how I can help you. And also this is how you can help me, you know, like asking the person, what would be best? How can I best support you at this time? And like you said, like all of those things are inside of you. You clearly have, you know, you're beautiful, you know, you can do it, you know, but this extra element of support is not only just great for you to like, be able to go chase your dreams, but it's so good for you guys as a unit to be connecting on that level and showing each other that because oftentimes couples just assume the other person knows because they've said it a million times, right? Like, you know, I think you're beautiful. Of course, I think you're beautiful. Or, you know, I think you're brilliant, of course. But the act of expressing that and continuously over time, because we're not the same person we were even yesterday, right? And so you told me that yesterday, but what about today, <laughs> right? It's like, today's a new day. I'm a new version of myself. Like you want to feel seen. You want to feel like that person like actually notices you and sees you and sees you for every stage of what you're doing. And I think the couples that really, what I've learned and what I've witnessed, um, the couples that really make it are the ones that don't stop paying attention and they don't stop asking like, how can I best support? And they don't stop sharing to their partner how they need to be supported. And so, you know, even with my husband, with Brian, like, we, so we started a podcast, which I'm going to have you guys on called Madly Forever. And that's really like our exploration. Like how, it's like asking questions to all these couples that we feel are interesting or maybe, you know, successful relationships or just, you know, different angles, different lenses through which people relate and just trying to learn. I think having an open mind um, and never getting too stuck in one way of thinking that it has to be a certain way. Flexibility and openness is, is just so important. Well, it's interesting that you say that we're constantly changing because I do think when you're younger and you're single or you're dating and you haven't had children and you haven't like, there are all these layers of like how we age and how we grow and how our, like our business changes. And there are definitely like points in my career where I look at as like more of like a, I was scaling, I was, I was going up. And then there are times when it feels like a bit of a plateau and I'm a little bit irrelevant or like there's nothing new or whatever. And it's, it is that communication. Cause there's a part of, I think all of us in a relationship that's like, you're a mind reader. Why don't you know what I need? And then you're just sitting there unsatisfied or without even communicating that like, Hey, (laughs) like I need you to hold me up at this point, or I need you to be the foundation for me a little bit like thicker of a foundation right now or whatever mm-hmm. it is to, to really. Yeah. And usually it's like, usually we act out at that point and actually end up pushing them away because the expectation creates the resentment. And then you try to get a little bit more attention by a little bit more, you know, subconsciously, like a little bit more, you know, friction maybe. And then it creates like a fight, which then ends up making you maybe feel closer and more connected because there's an opportunity to express yourself through that, you know, friction. But, you know, 
kind of effective communication is being able to just take responsibility for your own needs, right? And it's in everything, not just in romantic relationships, but really saying like, oh, wow, like this is what I'm experiencing right now. This is my feeling. How can I, you know, express myself to get my needs met instead of having expectations that the world is going to accommodate us? We really have to, you know, be clear on what we need and what we want. So let's go into the other aspects then, because when it comes to career and when it comes to like your, like what you even want in the day, like, Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people are pretty reactive. I'm definitely a someone who tries not to be, but like like everyone else can get in that system of like, okay, now we're I'm just reacting to my inbox and my son and my parents and you know and Chris or whoever. And mm-hmm. how on a tangible level can we start to align ourselves and really create the life we want yeah. from just like a simple day? Well, I love that question because I really do view the day as a metaphor for your life, like where you're really given a, a, bland, a brand new life each day that is like from sunrise to sunset, kind of reflective of like a whole life, right? And if you view it that way, if you view your day as sacred in that sense, you don't waste one, right? If you were like, this day is my life. And every day you woke up with that just feeling of it being so precious and that you could really, you know, implement this dream reality for today. And that feels pretty doable rather than like a whole life, right? I think it's a lot more easy to say, okay, I'm going to create my dream day and I'm going to create my dream life. (laughs) And if you just keep doing that, you know, day by day, you've created your dream life. So I think realizing that, you know, it is that simple, that your day is your life. The present moment is your life, right? So how do you want to feel? How do you want to feel as you move through your day? Like what is the energy that you want to possess and that you want to radiate out? And therefore, what kind of interactions, what kind of opportunities, synchronicities, people, um, experiences do you want to be a magnet for? And that's really a lot about, you know, manifestation is becoming this magnet where it's not so much effort, but it's a lot of just stepping into alignment so that you're like tuning into the radio station that you want to listen to, right? So it's just flowing. And so first identifying like, how do I want to feel today, right? And so when you wake up in the morning, you can literally tune into the frequency of how you want to feel. And what that means is like, you know, start, I, I, I would imagine most people want to feel really grateful, really happy, really confident, full of love, um, abundant, like they have everything that they need already. And so all of these feelings of just like pure contentment and love running through your veins. And it's as simple as really deciding to, to tune yourself to that, right? And so thinking of one thing that makes you feel grateful and why that thing makes you feel grateful, right? So I think oftentimes just saying like, oh, I have a gratitude list. I'm grateful for X, Y, Z. It doesn't really elicit a feeling, right? It's just sort of like a thing, another like thing to check off your list that you did that day in like your wellness, you know, (laughs) toolbox. But if you really, you know, think about, okay, well, you know, I really do have this practice where I wake up in the morning and I'm like, oh my gosh, like a new day. Wow. Like I actually have that thought where I'm like, because it's just as easy as you could not, right? Like yeah. it's just as easy as you could not wake up and have a new day. So you have a new day. Wow. Okay. I have a body. I have a body that I'm in. I'm so grateful that I get to like take a deep breath in and I get to fill my lungs and I get to, oh my God, I look over there. There's my husband. I'm so lucky to be with him. He's, you know, I get to be cozy with him in bed. Our bed is so comfortable. Like, you know, all the small things that are just actually really amazing. Um, and wherever your your gratitude takes you, but you know you can go deeper into it. Why why am I grateful for that? Because I get to do this. Because I get to do that. And then that what we were talking about earlier that level of excitement for your day. Okay, well, even I mean I get so excited to have my coffee, to have my breakfast. That to me is like super exciting. Yeah. Um, and and making it that way. So like everything you do can be sacred, right? And I know that you probably feel this way, but like. 
preparing a meal is a beautiful experience and not something to be like, you know, rushed through, right? It's like, of course we have, we're busy, but even if you have limited time, you can still do it mindfully and with appreciation to make it feel like you are, you know, really tuning into the magic of it. So cutting up the fruit, cutting up the, you know, whatever you're making that day for maybe you're preparing it for your child and like setting them up with their breakfast. And just like, even if we have limited time, we can make whatever we're doing really special and sacred. And I think people fly through what they have to do just to get to the next thing. And then our energy becomes completely just dispersed and lost, right? It's not honed in on the moment of what we're doing. So I think mindfulness is a huge part of it. Just really embodying your experience in any given moment and focusing it on it as like, this moment is your life, right? This moment is your whole universe. And if you can be in the moment and make whatever you're doing, even if it's something you don't want to be doing in theory, but you're there, you're experiencing it, how can you make it something that's special, something that's like, you know, open to limited, unlimited possibilities. And so I think people who, who view this day before them as an opportunity for like endless moments of really like bliss and wonder and awe and just feeling whatever that feeling is, it doesn't have to be necessarily a positive emotion, but just experiencing a feeling um, I think that you really are living your dream reality. And it doesn't have to be about, you know, any sort of materialistic thing. It's a really like simple concept. And then all the details can come, you know, come through, you know, whether it's like, I want this type of job, I want this type of, you know, house or car, or whatever, all that stuff can happen, but it's not the most important thing. The most important thing is your energy and how you're experiencing those things because you can get all of those things and not feel even remotely how you thought you were going to feel when they come. I think it truly is what I'm hearing you say is it's the gratitude of those things because it could just be as simple as loving your cup of coffee or the taste of the, the fruit that you cut up for your daughter, but you had a bite and it was so juicy and delicious or... You know, I think for all of us, we want to feel like I'm wanting to crawl through my computer and hug you right now <laughs> <Me> <laughs> because too. I want to feel that. Like, I, I think everyone wants to feel that whether they, whether they have what they want right now or what they thought they would have right now. And I think that's really interesting too. And in today's day and age is like, I look back and I was like, oh, by 25, I'll have, I'll be married with three, <laughs> three kids by 30. You know, it's like, I didn't have Sebastian until I was 35. <laughs> so it's, it, and where you think you're going, I think really just like cultivating that that very particular and I, I want to say like, um, I, I like to call it like positivity tracking, but it's not really just like, I'm grateful for my health, my house and my family. It's like, I'm really grateful for this cup of coffee and I'm really grateful for right. this. So I'm how- even grateful for the things that we don't particularly want to invite in which is the hardest thing. So it's like for people who are struggling right now, it's very easy to be so grateful when everything's going well, right? When like, you're like, oh yeah, I'm grateful because I feel amazing right now and everything's good. But when you're not feeling so good and things aren't going how you anticipated or how you you know dreamed that they would show up, you know, again, being grateful for the lesson, being grateful for the teaching in every experience and welcoming it rather than resisting it. Because the more we resist, we don't move through to the other side. And so, you know, I've had plenty of experiences that I would have rather not had, of course, um, as everyone does. But when that experience shows up, I really, really try not to judge it as like, this is horrible, this is bad, or even... I think that that actually creates a lot of happiness for me is that I don't assess things right away. Like if something happens, I really have this deep trust that it's happening and it's there um, to provide some sort of like bridge to the other side, to something else. And it's, it's a, it's bigger than what it seems, right? I don't make a conclusion that something is leading me in, in a, in a bad place. I, 
trust that something is showing up, even if it's something that I don't want, because there's something better that's happening and that there's something I need to learn through the process. And if you can really like welcome the things that you wouldn't have chosen, but have chosen you and welcome the, the teaching and the lesson, then you have so much freedom on the other side. But the more we resist, it just keeps showing up for us in different ways. And we also just suffer so much. And we can't enjoy the moment. We can't have gratitude. I mean, even a breakup, it's like so many people just get stuck after a breakup and they can't move forward because they're, they haven't accepted or they like feel that person wronged them or that there's no one better for them, right? But by resisting that experience and by not welcoming that it, it is a gift, in some way there's being a gift that's, that's been you know, presented to you that you wouldn't have chosen, um, you stay stuck rather than actually getting the fruits of the gift by not resisting and seeing what's out there and trusting, oh, okay, this is being presented to me. There's something better. There's something in this experience that I need. It's finding the silver lining almost of what is the, what is the takeaway? What can we, how yeah. is this going to change your direction or change who you are or change your next decision or being open to like the growth of it, right? Yes. And less reactivity and more just like sitting with something for a moment and not judging it right away. Like you said, like it's so easy to, to react to, to the things that are thrown at us or shown to us throughout the day. But, and I feel like I'm almost on like the, the, the very low end of, of the spectrum of reactivity. Whereas like sometimes Ryan will be like, hello, like I'm trying to like have a conversation. Like, can you react? And it's like, I'm just taking a moment to like, just like, let that sink in. You know, I, sometimes like, I really, I don't have a, a, an opinion right away about something because there's so many things that it could mean, right? So I'm open to how it unfolds and I'm not, you know, even with really big decisions, it's like, I trust either way it will be okay, you know? Yeah. So it's, um, it's not thinking that like, you know, everything is so black and white and this is good and this is bad. But really what you bring to it, it's going to... And if your energy is aligned within yourself, it's going to unfold for you. <sighs> so beautiful. And, and it's so amazing to me because it's all of these... You're, you're giving all of... I, I want to I unpack it because I want the tangible tools if someone doesn't automatically wake up and say, I'm thankful for my husband and my cozy bed and my body. Yeah, that's like right. That's a practice that we're, we need to cultivate. And in theory, I'm like, oh my God, I just want to start my day that way. I want to look at this. You, know, you, we talked about before the show started, Like I've sort of been a single mom this month. We've had some health issues on Chris's side. And you know that's scary. We've had it layered on top of 2020, just a lot of health issues with our parents and and that you know no one wants that obviously um, right. but to find the silver linings in it that like Bash and I are actually having a lot of little adventures where normally Chris would step in and be super dad and I'd be able to take podcasts and email clients back and do customer service on my protein powder but now it's like I am forced to like put that into specific times of the day when I have yeah. support from my parents. And then I have all this really fun adventure time with him, you know? So even just you saying that to me, I'm thinking, wow, like, yeah, we went to Bear Coast Coffee and I got him a bash of Chino and he got his little almond milk and an espresso cup on the way to my parents' house this morning. And we, and he like said he was having a bash of Chino and then so the thought that was so funny, you know, like it's just, but Sometimes you're not in the moment to be like, that was so amazing. <laughs> right. Totally. Because like, you, because it's whenever you think that you should be somewhere else than where you are, you're not enjoying yourself. You're not present. And so this idea that I should be here, but I'm here. I should be doing this, but I'm doing that. They're doing this and I'm doing this, but I should be doing what they're doing. You're completely disembodied from your experience and you're separate from what's available to you, which is unlimited joy in any moment. It really is. But when you split off and you think, oh, I, I should be doing this, all the joy is robbed from you. And so you're just going through the motions or you're trying to get through or you're, you know, it's like when people live for the weekend, right? Like they just like try to get through their, their, you know, weekday or their work week just to like have those two days on the weekend, which, and I know some people have incredibly, you know, stressful, challenging jobs, which of course, you know, 
is tough, but you even see people who just have this sparkle, this energy to whatever job they're doing. And it might be like what you would assume is like a really grueling, terrible job, but you feel their energy. They're a happy person. They are bringing their zest and love and gratitude for life to wherever they are. And if you can do that, you're living your dream reality, right? You are you are embodying the the sacredness of any given moment and not judging it as it should be like this, but it's like this, you know? And you can change your reality. You can get yourself out of external scenario that you don't like, a different job, a different house, a different partner. You can do all of those things, but it starts with changing your internal world to make those changes. And nothing, nothing shifts unless you do that. Wow. So I want the tangible tools to help people shift because this is what you do for a living. Yeah. With corporations, I'm sure people that hate their jobs and with people who have amazing jobs and are following their yeah. art, artistic dreams in making them a reality. It is like, I, I want people as I, I'm sure they're feeling as inspired as I am to like really look at their, look at their day and hold on to their energy and be in alignment and not be wanting to or wishing they're somewhere else. So they can really just harness that immediate present joy. Yeah. So if someone isn't in the practice of waking up and thinking these thoughts, or they aren't in the practice, or they worse, they are in the practice of wanting to be somewhere else, wanting to be, wanting for it to be the weekend, wanting it for it to be the next month. Cause I feel like that's such a, it's a slippery slope. Like people, want to be want it to be summer then they want it to be mm-hmm. the new year then they want the holidays then they want the holidays over like mm-hmm. it's just and or even like with with this covid situation it's like when this is all over it's like we don't know what it's sometimes whack-a-mole right like one thing's done and then the next thing shows up so it's like you can never live for like when that's done then I'll be happy or when this comes then I'll be happy it's really about finding peace and contentment in this moment, despite what's going on. Right. And that's real freedom. Yeah. So some, some, some tangible tools for that. I mean, what I always have clients do, um, and this is really the assessment part, but is to write down the thoughts that they're having most frequently on a daily basis. Like what are those thoughts that show up most, um, most often and take up most real estate in your mind? So Sometimes, you know, you're, you're pretty aware of this and you can sort of write them down. But sometimes you're like, what am I, you know, what am I thinking about during the day? What is, you know, the script and the um, sort of like CD or, you know, soundtrack to my life that I'm replaying over and over again? And what we, what research has told us, neuroscience has showed us is that we think the same thoughts basically every single day, more or less. A couple, you know, I think it's, you know, a a chunk of them change due to like the specifics of our experience of the day. But most of the time, the quality of the thoughts, whether they're negative or positive and what we're thinking are the same every single day. So if you can identify what those thoughts are that are creating, the thought creates sort of the feeling a lot of time in the body that you're experiencing, which then creates your energy, right? Creates how you're viewing any given moment, how you're perceiving your reality in that moment. So taking a moment to really assess, okay, what am I thinking? What is the soundtrack that I'm walking through the world with? And writing those down. So if you have a journal, you could put it next to your bed and take some time to really just like without censoring or judging what comes out, because it might be something that you might be a little bit embarrassed to write down, or you might be, you know, feel shame around, but eliminate that and just really take responsibility for our minds are, you know, crazy. <laughs> our minds ha- are just really like illogical and can say a bunch of stuff that makes no sense. And that's okay, you know? And so just writing down and identifying. And then next to those thoughts, um, just identify, is this thought serving me? Like, is this a thought that is actually lending to the reality that I want to create? Or is it coming in between me and the reality that I want to create? And oftentimes you'll really know that right away. Like, okay, this thought's toxic. This thought's making me feel like shit. This thought's making me feel really insecure. (laughs) This thought's making me, you know, have my a stomach ache, (laughs) whatever it is. And so next to that, after you've, you know, identified the ones that no longer 
need to be a part of this soundtrack of your daily life, create an alternative thought. So it's like implanting this belief system and rewiring your, your thought process, rewiring your brain, which we all know that we can do now with neuroplasticity. Our minds are malleable. Our minds, they become very, you know, stuck in a loop over time. And it seems like it's very, very, very difficult to change, but with discipline, we can. And the discipline part is actually taking the time to assess and to replace. And it takes a long time to really, truly like replace this thinking process. But once it becomes more you know, automatic, it's like whatever you feed gets stronger and that becomes baseline, that becomes the norm. So replacing this thought with something that serves you. So you think, okay, so for example, a thought could be, um, I'm not smart enough. How about that? Like I'm not smart enough for my work. I'm not smart as the other people at my work. And that could be creating a feeling of just insecurity and not having a, a confident voice or speaking up or sharing your ideas or really taking your your dreams to the next level, right? And so walking around with this limiting belief of I'm not smart enough um, that you can sort of see like, okay, well, where did that thought stem from? Where did it start? How did it get there? Is this thought actually based on my truth in this moment, right? And sort of just giving yourself a chance to investigate how this thought got stronger, how it developed over time, giving your space time to like really inquire without judgment why this developed as part of the way you feel about yourself and what you think. And then, you know, replacing the thought, okay, well, what thought actually serves my dream reality and serves my highest self and the highest manifestation of my life? And it would be like, I'm, you know, capable and smart and brilliant and able to to make my dreams into reality and creating your own version that feels authentic for you, right? Feeling that it's coming from you and not from somebody else. Because a lot of times these belief systems that are embedded came from someone else in the first place. So you are programming your mind with how you want to see the world. And so I'm not going to give someone their, you know, their script in their head. It has to come from them because that's the most important thing. And so going down the list and replacing these thoughts and having just sort of this like log that they can look at for a while and like replace because it's not going to happen automatically right away, right? It's going to happen with repetition and with reprogramming and rewiring. And so starting there and also just noticing the more that you write these things down, you'll notice when it shows up, it's going to become like a light bulb turned on where it was dark. So you would have just been acting from a place of this limiting belief, you know, coloring your perception, whereas now you're like, oh, that popped up and that's why I'm feeling this way. And that's why I'm acting this way. That's why I'm perceiving them to view me like this. Let me take the responsibility back into my own hands. How can I switch the glasses that I'm wearing, switch the lenses through which I'm seeing the world and start over, right? And so it's this process of like relearning how to engage with your environment. That's such an awesome tip because I feel, I mean, it's a weird analogy, but it's like if you're interested in buying a car and you're like, I'm interested in that red Ford. Then all of a sudden you're driving around and you're like, there are red Fords everywhere. Totally. Like, and that's yeah, kind of totally. how it is if you're feeling like I say this to myself. I just realized that I've been telling myself this story for however many years. And then once the story pops up, you're like, I'm doing it again. Like it's it's yep. when it's top of mind or when you recognize it, I think it obviously yes. becomes a lot more. And the world will show you what you tell yourself. So if you're telling yourself you're not smart enough, you're going to attract experiences and people that sort of tell you that and reflect that back to you. And vice versa, if you are feeling, you know, you walk out of your house and you're feeling like super vibrant and beautiful that day, you're going to feel that from other people, right? You're going to start seeing like that smile that someone gives you and like feel even more, you know, more on fire that day. But if you walk out of your house feeling gross, you're feeling, oh God, I want to fall back into bed you're going to feel that energy around you, right? And so really you show up with how people meet you. I love that. I love that. So how do we... What's a tangible tool? Obviously, we have our journal or writing down the thoughts that 
the stories we tell ourselves, we're rewriting these stories, we're recognizing these stories. What about this, the presence and the joy? How do we cultivate, how do we cultivate that very specific gratitude that is experiential and not just broad? Yeah, for sure. Well, I mean, we kind of described it before, but I really do believe it's through the embodiment of an experience, the sensory experience. So people who are great. I mean, I've never seen someone who is enjoying a meal, like closing their eyes, savoring their food, not be grateful for it, right? It's like the person who's rushed through driving, eating while they're talking on the phone, don't even know what they had for lunch, couldn't tell you, you know, where they, you know, where they got it. That's the lack of presence, right? So bringing presence and embodiment to what you're doing creates gratitude because you're appreciating it, right? You're being there in that moment, honing in on it and honing in on whatever you're doing. If you're with your son, you're with your son and you're not thinking I should be doing X, Y, Z while I'm with them, but like really, really honing in on that moment and that experience. It's difficult. I know that it's like we have a million things to do and oftentimes we're multitasking, but the more that you can really just allow yourself even to just be okay with the fact that you have multiple things going on that you need to do and that's a part of it and it's okay, but like not resisting and not thinking you should be doing something else but knowing you have this and you have that and that's okay. And allowing yourself to be with and share energy with whoever and whatever you're doing. So the presence, right? And that creates such you know, an impact for the other person or whatever you're doing um, on the other side because the best gift you could really give someone is your full presence, right? And it creates this like amazing, you know, just opportunity for someone to 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 really feel seen and connected and for them to see you right and that's where magic starts to happen so i would say honestly it's simple but just really really tuning into your present moment by using your senses as a guide taste your food taste you know whatever you're eating see with your eyes like don't just like drive just you know checking out thinking of a million things really take in the sights that you're seeing, really like observe what you're looking at. You know, if you're listening to music, really try to like hear the different tunes and the different um, instruments, like really getting more sharp uh, and more, I don't know, just appreciative of all the nuances around you. Trying to see the world through the eyes of someone who would, you know, be living this day as if it's their last or like a child who's just not concerned with being somewhere that they're not, you know? It's almost like you're asking people to be on vacation because I feel like the experience that you're totally that you're explaining is how people feel when they go somewhere they've never been before and they're yes. seeing things for the first time and they're tasting things for the first time and they're they're not yeah. distracted by their phones or the other things that other places that they need to be. They've really that's such a beautiful experience when you do have time, quote unquote, away. But especially today with COVID and quarantine and you know travel restrictions and all of these things, it's like, how are we taking that vacation mentality and bringing it into the present? Because we don't need to go on extravagant vacations to have these really... Um, really like fulfilling experiences. Yeah. And if you can find the beauty in the mundane, in the everyday then your life is like your heaven, right? It's heaven on earth. And I think when we just expect everything to be the same that it was yesterday, or like, oh yeah, I have this every day and this is a, what I do every day and it's not new anymore, it's not exciting. Then the joy is sucked out of it. The excitement is out of it. So how can you even a little bit of newness to the things that you're doing you know, repeatedly, three times a day, four times a day? How can you make it new? How can you you know, take a different route to, to the grocery store? How can you, you know, listen to your partner in a different way where you're like, you know, really interested in them from a different perspective than you have been like noticing them across the room, doing something and like being like, wow, like they look really, really good right now. <laughs> or like they're like, or they're wow. Like listening to them. I mean, a lot of us are working from home 
hearing them on a work call, like, wow, that, that was a brilliant thing that they just said, you know, and really like paying attention and seeing someone as if you're seeing them for the first time, you know, and especially with children, they really are a different version of themselves every day. It blows my mind. Like every day, Amelie comes in and I'm like, you have a new this, a new that. Like, it's crazy. She seems so much bigger, so much more grown up. And, you know, she's literally changing before her eyes, but we all are. You just can't see it. And everything's different. And even just like the seasonal fruit that you get to experience. Like there's a fruit that's in season. Like we just picked up some pomegranates. You know, it's like, that's exciting. That's a new addition to our repertoire for the morning, you know, and just getting, you know, starting to appreciate those small things. Cause I think when you're reliant on these big extravagant things and waiting to happen and waiting for the external, you know, hit of something new, rather than creating that feeling of newness for yourself, you're not free and you're not, you know, you're not taking advantage of, of the magic of each and every day. So beautiful. Well, I am so excited for everyone to start taking advantage of the magic of every day and pretending like they're on vacation and seeing the newness <laughs> in themselves and their partners. Cause it's true. We are, we are constantly changing. We just get stuck in our every day. And instead of being stuck in our every day, can we experience and be present in our every day to harness that joy? Yeah. We get stuck in our, in our expectation of what it's going to be like, of our expectations that it's going to be the same, right? So we don't take a second look or we don't notice, you know, oh, okay. We just sort of, when we just expect things to unfold the way we want, we don't like study them as much. We don't notice them as much because we already know, okay, it's going to be like that. But when, if we didn't know, if we were seeing it for the first time, it's like, there's so many things to notice about it that you've never seen about any given thing, about a tree that you've been looking at for five years, you could find something new, you know? So beautiful. Oh, Jesse, put your brain in my brain. <laughs> I would just be on vacation every day. <laughs> no, no, it's good. It's really, it's really good stuff. It, it's tangible, but it's also what I think you're gifting people is the gift of joy now, not waiting for it. Not, mm-hmm. I'm going to be joyful and thankful when I have that house, when I have that car, when I have that husband, when I have that family, when my job is doing X, Y, and Z. It's just, mm-hmm. how can you really? really just be present and so thankful for where we're at right now and even the lessons we're being taught. Such good stuff. Exactly. And it doesn't have to be, nothing's perfect, right? We're not perfect. Nothing's perfect. And waiting for perfection is just a recipe for disaster, but it's finding that contentment with whatever shows up. And if you can be content with whatever shows up, you are set. You are set. And if you trust that no matter what happens, you'll be okay then you are, you know, not a slave to, you know, anxiety, right? Or like needing to, things to be in control, but you can relax and you can be free. So good. <laughs> Everyone's going to want to follow along. They're going to want to be clients. You have to tell everyone where they can find you so they can be free. Thank you, Kelly. Yes. So my Instagram, I guess, is a great place to to follow along. It's at Jesse Delo, and my website is jessiedelo.com. Also, um, How You Glow is my lifestyle platform that I share with my partner Tara, which is also a great place to find inspiration and wellness tips and tricks and um, travel guides, etc. Um, and then soon, Kelly and her husband Chris will be on Madly Forever podcast, so you can tune into that as well, which is for those of you wanting to dive into love and relationships and all of that fun stuff, you can listen to us there. It's such a good one to listen to. Like when Chris and I, we go to Mammoth and it's a six hour drive. So it's such, it's such a fun podcast to listen to with your partner if you have if you have one, because I think it really, it's almost like table topics. It, right. Exactly. Learn- Sometimes you wouldn't necessarily bring something up, but then you're like, oh, what do you think about that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. Sometimes podcasts can be great for that, huh? Yeah. Yeah. It and brings I- something into the combo that you wouldn't have been able to say maybe. Absolutely. I feel like this podcast is going to do that for a lot of people as well. So, oh, so much. Well, I'm so grateful, Kelly. It's so nice to see your face and to share this with you. So thank you so, so much. Oh, and I, I know think you're such a bright light. I'm like, go shine on. Oh, <laughs> I love 
you and vice versa. I'm so inspired by you and all the goodness you're bringing to the world and to everyone out there. Thank you for listening to Be Well by Kelly. Please subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Learn more at bewellbykelly.com and follow me on Instagram at bewellbykelly. I would love if you picked up my books, Body Love and Body Love Every Day. They're sold on Amazon and at all major booksellers. 